Hello and welcome back to Joe's Math Tools. In our session today, we're solving another algebraic equation involving fractions. And if you're ready, let's get started. So in our equation today that we're solving, we're going to begin the way we would always begin fractions with unlike denominators. Because we know that we cannot add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators, we must first find our LCD. And remember that your LCD is the exact same thing as finding the LCM. So we're looking for the lowest common multiple that 3 and 5 has in common. And we know that with 3 and 5, their common multiple is 15. So now we're going to be changing our entire fraction to denominators where we have 15. Okay, so we're going to begin with our first fraction, which is our 2y minus 1 equals 3. And remember, like I said in some of my previous videos, you do not have to do the working to the side. You can always do this working right on your fraction by doing your cross multiplication. But as always, I'm doing it to the side in case we have persons who are watching for the first time or persons who may not be good with finding, with, you know, just changing these fractions into their equivalent form. At least they'll be able to follow along to understand how we're going to be changing our 2y minus 1 to a denominator with 15. So when our fraction has to have a denominator of 15. Okay, so we're looking for a number that when we multiply it by 3 is equal to 15. And we know that 5 times 3 is 15. And if we multiply our 3 by 5, by 5 we're going to multiply everything in my numerator also by 5. So 5 times 2y will equal 10y. And then our 5 will also be multiplied to our negative 1 or our minus 1, which will equal to a minus 5. So our first fraction in its equivalent form is 10y minus 5. And now we're going to be changing our 3y plus 1 all over 5 also to its equivalent form where it has 15 as its denominator. So we're looking for our number that when we multiply 5 by it, it's going to equal to 15. And we know that just like multiplying 3 by 5, we know that 3 times 5 is 15. So everything in my numerator will be multiplied by 3. So 3 times 3y will equal to 9y. 3 times 1 will equal to 3. So our second fraction in its equivalent form is equal to 9y plus 3. And now for our last term, which is 10. And because 10 is a whole number, we know that with our whole numbers, their denominator is 1. So we're going to be changing, again, this fraction also to where it has a denominator of 15. And we know that 1 times 15 is equal to 15. That means 15 will be multiplied to 10, which will equal to 115. So our equation is now equal to 150. Okay, so now that everything has the exact same denominator, we don't have to use our denominator anymore. So that means I'm going to be moving my terms down and as I move them, I will also begin to collect my like terms together so that I can begin calculating in my next step. And remember that when you move these terms, always move them with the sign that is directly in front of them. We don't move the term and leave the sign behind it and then move the number. We always move them with the sign that's in front of it. So we have 10y plus 9y is going to equal to 19y. And negative 5 plus 3 will give us a minus 2, which is equal to 115. And now let's collect our like terms over the equal sign. Since my 2 is being subtracted on the left-hand side, that means we're going to do the opposite and add it on the right-hand side. So we have 19y is equal to 152. Okay, so now we need to get our verbal y on one side of the equation by itself. And because 19 is being multiplied to our y, we're going to divide both sides of our equation by 19. So our 19s on the left-hand side will cancel, leaving us with y. 
and 132 divided by 19 is equal to 8. Okay, so now let's perform our chair. In our last part of our equation, we said that our y was equal to a. So now we're going to be substituting y everywhere that it, substituting y for a, sorry, everywhere that it now appears in our equation. And once we have done that, we will then begin to simplify each of our fractions to see if everything works out and is indeed equal to our 10. Okay, so let's start with our first fraction. So we know that 2 times 8 is 16, and 16 minus 1 will equal to 15 thirds. Okay, so for our next fraction, we have 3 times 8 is equal to 24, and 24 plus 1 will give us 25, and that's all over 5, and it's still equal to 10. Now, at this point, you can decide if you want to find the LCD. That is fine if you want to take that step to find your LCD. Remember, it's the same thing we did in the first step, where we know that our LCD is 15, and then we'll be changing these fractions to their equivalent form, where 15 is the denominator. And we know that with our first fraction, when 3 is multiplied to 5, it's equal to 15. So when 15 is multiplied to 5, that will give us 75. And then when 25 will be multiplied to 3, because 3 times 5 is what gives us 15, that will equal to that will equal to 75. And we know that 10 times 15 will give us 150. And again, once we have our same denominators, we don't need our 15 anymore. And we know that when 75 plus 75 is added, it will equal to 150 and both sides is equal to 150, which is our main goal. So the LCD is one approach that you can take, or if you are somebody who's good with simplifying your fraction, you may have realized that 15 is in the three time table, so I can divide three by three to get one, and 15 I can divide by three to get five. And then with my five, I can do the same thing. Five divided by five is one, and then 25 divided by five will give me five, and I know that when 5 is added to 5, it is equal to 10. So one of the things that I want you to not stress over when you are working out these type of equation is feeling that there is one approach that you have to take to check your answer. There is no one approach, and we know that with fractions, fractions can get crazy, and you can sometimes work out fractions in two to three different ways to solve your question. And this is a prime example that we worked out our question in two different ways and in working out this question in two different ways we still found that the left hand side and the right hand side were equal to the exact same number which is the main goal that when i substitute my answer back into my equation that both sides of this equation equal to the same answer and that tells me that my answer that i got which is my y equal 8 is the correct answer for my equation Okay, so I hope this video was very helpful to you. I hope that as you work through your algebra journey and solving these type of equations, you are able to accomplish that without any hiccup or without any headache. Remember that practice is key and you will get better. Just keep on trying. And until next time, this is Jules Matos where math is made easy.